we thank you, Father, again for the privilege of praising you. Lord, we acknowledge you, we honor you, we glorify you. Lord, we lift your name on tonight, Father God. Lord, we bless you, Father God, as we come for this moment of prayer and for this moment of Bible study. Lord, we ask you, Father God, to bless us, to keep us, to minister to us, Father God, as only you can. We pray, Father God, that you bless us through your word, that your word will appeal to us, that your word will be made real to us, and that our lives will be made the better because of your word. We ask you to bless us now. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Everything. Praise him, praise him. said several times this is our month of prayer and so we will be talking about prayer in our Bible study each night each Wednesday night of the month of January we believe in beginning the year off in prayer yes, yes. we ought to begin the year off in prayer meaning that we want to thank God for what he has done last year and we want to ask God's blessing on what he is doing this year, as well as thank God for what he has already done this year. Amen. We serve the awesome God, and whatever we go through, he has done great things in us. Amen. He has done great things in us, through us, for us, for us and with us. Amen. Hallelujah. First Chronicles in the Old Testament, mm -hmm. First Chronicles chapter 4, Verses 9 and 10, very familiar passage of scripture to most people who have read the Bible at least one time. First Chronicles chapter 4 in the Old Testament, verses 9 and 10. First Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. When you found it, you will discover these words. Now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bow him in pain. And Jabez called on the Lord, on God, the, the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory that your hand would be with me and that you would keep me from evil that I may not cause pain. Mm -hmm. So God granted him what he requested. Amen. God granted him what he requested. We find in this text Jabez, and let me tell you about Jabez. Jabez was just like my brothers and sisters say I was. Even though they went there, they got a, they have some some conclusion of how I was, right? Mm -hmm. Jabez was one who was named Jabez by his mama because he caused pain. She named him Jabez because he caused her pain. Mm -hmm. Even his name indicates pain. Mm -hmm. His name means sorrow. sorrow. His, main, his name describes pain. 
His name, the name Jabez, means grief. Jabez had a problem all the way through pre-K. Even in pre-K, every time they would call his name, they would be reminded that he was sorrowful. They would be reminded that Jabez's name identified with pain. When he moved from pre-K to big school, first grade, or he moved from pre-K to kindergarten, all of his friends called him pain. Here come pain. Here come sorrow. Here come that old Jabez. The Bible said that his mother called him Jabez because he caused pain. The reason why we chose the lesson tonight is not because Jabez was sorrowful, not because he caused pain, but Jabez had connection with God. It says to us tonight that that you can have problems Mm -hmm. and still have connection with God. It says to us that you can be going through pain Mm. but still have connection with God. It says to us that you can be looked down upon but still have connection with God. You know, if if anybody's going to say something good about you, it's got to be your mom. Jabez's mama didn't even have a good thing to say about <laughs> Jabez's mama said, I named him Jabez because he caused me pain. Mm. And everywhere Jabez went, guess what? There went pain. Every time Jabez opened his mouth, people was reminded that Jabez's name meant pain and that Jabez caused pain. Okay. It reminds me of me. Hmm. Growing up, I caused my family some pain. Hmm. Yeah, I caused them to be upset. I caused pain. Mm-hmm. But the good thing is I had connection with God. Okay. The first number nine. First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9 and 10, and then we will pray. Now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. The word honorable means that his heart was turned toward God. The word honorable means that he was true, righteous, and he had righteous principles. But even though he was honorable, even when this honor, this honor came out, it still meant grief. So in the, in the original Hebrew, this word honorable, not only does it mean that he was right with God, not only does it mean his heart was turned toward God, not only does it mean that he was true and right, but this word honorable, as it associates with Jabez, it even means grief. When do you grieve? Mm-hmm. What causes you to grieve? Mm-hmm. How do you handle your grief? Mm-hmm. Jabez is going to tell us tonight mm-hmm. how to handle grief, how to handle pain, how to handle the struggle in life. It didn't stop in kindergarten, pre K, it didn't stop in elementary school, it didn't stop in junior high, middle school. Everywhere Jabez went, on graduation day, the principal or whoever was calling the roll called Jabez's name, and everybody in the audience said, they is, they go back. <laughs> Their song. Most of us in this room, people thought about us and what we would have to deal with before they, they named us. Some people don't like their name, but mm. most people, yeah. most people have meaning to their name that are positive. Have you looked up your name lately? Love. Have you ever looked up your name? What does your name mean? Mm. 
Ngini bang? Flower. Lily. Huh? Lily means flower. Lily means flower. Yes, sir. Kevin means handsome. Means handsome. Handsome, all right. Well, his mama knew what to name him, didn't she? She said, this is going to be my only boy, so I'm going to name him just like I like it. I'm going to name him handsome. What does your name mean? Do you live up to your name? j Bass' name meant pain. And mama said, when I bore him, I bore him in pain. Name him j Bass. The Bible says he was more honorable, meaning that his heart was turned toward God, but even as his heart was turned toward God, he still caused grief. He was more honorable than his brothers and his mother called his name Jabez. And this is what she said when she introduced him. She, she introduced all the other children and she left it at their name. This is Ralph, this is Joe, this is Susie. But when she introduced Jabez, she says, this is Jabez because I bore him in pain. This is the boy that caused me so much pain. I remember daddy used to come get me out of trouble and it caused mama pain. I'm still apologizing to this day. But at least she didn't name me J-Bass. At least I didn't have to deal with it on graduation day and all through college. But J-Bass had to deal with it even at work. As he was picking up boxes, loading them onto the truck, as he was digging a ditch, as he was calculating agorism, <laughs> they said, oh, pain. Who took this drawing down here, pain did? Hmm. <laughs> had to deal with it. Mm -hmm. But the Bible says he was more honorable than the others in his household. He was more true. He was he had a heart that was turned toward God. He was honorable. We don't want the pain side of J-Bad, but we do want the honor side. He was greatly respected, even though his name was pain. He was more honorable than his brothers. And even though he was more honorable, his mama had already named him J-Bad. What's your name? Why they call you that? I'm not gonna tell you my nickname. Because even the folk that called me by my nickname don't know why they call me my nickname. I asked them the other day. Why y'all call me that? This little woods is not pea head either. That's what Sister David's friends called me, Sister Brown, when they first met me. Oh, there's old pea head. But your name ought to mean something. We have girls now whose name are Hennessy. Girls named like Alice. Girls named like Crown. Boys named like Royal. And they're not talking about the Royal of God. You know, I heard some of those names should be good. What do these names really mean? Y'all stop doing children like that. Hennessy, Alizé, Tequila Nim, Jack Black, Gold Lady, Ivy, the Rock. All these names, people, children have to, and then some people name their children such no, long names until they're in high school before they learn how to spell their own names. Teachers come in the door and, and mess up their name when they call on the road, they'll correct them right down the spot. That ain't mine. But don't get mad at me, get it mad at the folk that got together and decided to call you. So the Bible says, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. His mama named him Jabez because she says he caused pain. Verse number 10. 
And Jabez called on the God of Israel. Says just tonight, regardless of the circumstances you're in, regardless of what your name means, regardless of how people treat you, regardless of the pain you may cause others, you better learn to call on the God of Israel. Jabez could have wallowed in his stuff. Jabez could throw a pity party every day, all day, if he wanted to. But the Bible didn't say Jabez threw a pity party. It says Jabez called on the God of Israel. In your troubles, in your pain, in your agony, call on God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God of Israel. The God our creator. The God who blesses us. Call on him. Boy, J. Bass could have really thrown a stick. The Bible didn't say that he went to his mother and said, why you did me like this? He just turned and called on God. Our circumstances cause us be upset, but it all calls us to call on God. The word, word call, word, word call means to cry out, to utter out aloud, to call on, to, to cry out to the Lord. Anything in your life that you really feel like you need to cry out to the Lord? Hmm. Have you ever felt sometimes that you just couldn't say it Quietly and politely. Is there ever been a time that you just had to cry out to the Lord? A woman said the other day, police stopped her and she just had a black girl cry. What is a black girl cry? Can somebody give me a demonstration of a black girl cry? Anybody? What's what's she just said? Uh, she just said uh, she said police stopped her and, and the police said, here, here's your license. See you later. <laughs> she said she just started to, she had a black girl cry. Yeah, yeah. Sister, Sister Darren, what's a black girl cry? <laughs> that was with, when that uh, I don't think they stopped at that point. <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> you gotta dry up. You know. I understand a black girl cry to be a cry when you stop it. <laughs> you have to have to hyperventilate a few times, then you get mad again <laughs> and cry. So is that a black girl cry? Mm -hmm. I ain't never heard it. I hadn't heard it either until she told me. <laughs> you have to get to a point in your life where you have to have a black girl cry. And, and, and it's, a, it's a cry out loud. It's a it's a cry to let everybody who hear you know that there's a pain in you that you just can't keep to yourself. So Sister Davis tried to give us a demonstration of a black girl cry, but I don't think she got that. <laughs> we have to get to a point where we cry out to the Lord in such a way that the very gates of heaven Cheers us. The Bible says, verse number 10, 1 first, first Chronicles chapter 4, verse 10, and Jabez called on the Lord. This word call means to cry out aloud. Called on the Lord. He called on, he called on God, the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that. You would bless me indeed. This phrase, oh, that means that I know it's a possibility. I know that you can make the impossible possible. Yes, Lord. Let me tell you, when you got some impossibilities, you need to cry out to God in such a way that God understands and you know, oh, that if you would just bless me. I know it's possible. Mm -hmm. Songwriter says that he can do what no other power, oh, Holy Ghost power can do. Mm -hmm. Songwriter says that 
that I know you can do what no other power can do because it's Holy Ghost power that does it. First part of that, that, that stanza says, God specializes. God specializes in the impossible. He specializes. Oh, that, just that phrase, oh, that means, God, I know it's a possibility. God, I know it's impossible, but I know you understand the impossible, and you can make the impossible possible. We ought to have some oh, that moments. Some moments where we just come to the conclusion, God, I can't do it, but I know you can. One song writer says, I can't stand the rain against my window pane. Who sings that one? We got Christian folk in here tonight. We got some saints in here. So, so all that, all that, all that, because it's possible with you, nothing is impossible. In our situations that are bad conditions, we ought to have all that moments. In other words, he said, all that, he, he said, make an exception, God. God, I need you to make an exception. God, I know you can do it. I know you have done it. I want you to do something that you've never done. Make an exception. In bad situations, make an exception. How many of you want God to make an exception? Make God, God, I need you to do something that I personally have never seen before. But you know, God has done it all, right? Yes, he has. And that that we have not seen, God has already done it. Even if he's done it in the future, he's already done it. Because the God we serve is a God of eternity. Eternity past, eternity present, and eternity future. God is able to do it. All that, God, all that if you just bless me indeed. So he moves from all that, you will bless me indeed. Key word here is bless. Look at what he says. He says, oh, that do something exceptional, do something different, do the impossible, make the impossible possible. And then when he says bless, it means to congratulate. So what, what he does, he asks God, God, do something that's extraordinary, do something that is impossible, make the impossible possible, and then on top of that, God, congratulate me. Congratulate me. Cause me to kneel. The word bless will cause me to kneel. And then the, the, the third thing it means is to adore God. Bless means admiration. So in the midst of this prayer that seems like it is a personal prayer, it seems like it's a selfish prayer, it seems like Jabez doesn't give by anybody but him, himself. He says, God, after you make things possible, congratulate me because I'm going to kneel down and I'm going to show you some admirations. I admire you, God. Jesus says, when you begin to pray, admire God first. Adore him first. Thank him first. Give him credit first. So he says, God, as you make things possible that are impossible, congratulate me because I have a mind to congratulate you. When we praise him, we salute him. Amen. When we praise him, we adore him. When we praise him, it even causes us to kneel down before him and congratulate him. This word blessed means to congratulate means to adore God. Now in the midst of him praying, God bless me, we ought to have to bless God. We ought to have a need. We ought to feel a need. We ought to know there's a need to bless God. 
Verse 10 says, And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed. Bless me indeed. Lord, whatever you do, bless me indeed. He didn't call on God for anybody else, did he? When you're going through, when you're having problems, and you want God to bless you indeed, ask him. God, I need you like I need none of them. And while you're in it, God, bless me indeed. Bless me absolutely. Bless me altogether. Bless me to the point that I'm going to be so grateful to thank you for it. Bless me indeed. Look at God. God, Bless me. One songwriter says, Eagle flies on Friday. And Saturday, uh -oh, they're going to be spiritual. Isn't they? Eagle flies on Friday. Mm -hmm. And Saturday, I go out and play. And that was the, un the ungodly man of saying, I'm being blessed by those who bless me through finances. That pays me for my job. But if you really want to be blessed, you better call on God and ask him to bless you indeed. The next thing he says is, God, while I got your attention, I want you to enlarge <laughs> some versions say territory. Enlarge my territory. God, I want you to enlarge my coast. God, I want you to bless me so much until you bless my process. Enlarge my territory. We talk about missions. We talk about missions. And whenever we talk about missions, we, re we realize that Jesus says, go to Jerusalem wherever you already are, minister where you are. Then he says, go to Judea, another area that's bigger than where you are. The problem is many times we don't witness past where we live. Many times we don't witness past a territory where we grew up. I told you before, a brother got married in third ward, he got married at 26, 27 years old, one of the other. And he had never been out of third ward in 26 years. He got married, left, and went on his honeymoon. That's the first time he ever been out of third ward. He will tell you today, I had never gone past third ward in 26 years. Never been out of it. Messed around and married a lady that wanted to do something. Wanted to go somewhere. And that was the first time he left third ward in 26 years. He went to school there, went to church there, went home there, played there. When he got to 45, he went back the other way. And <laughs> never left third ward in 26 years. J Bass might have been that guy, but J Bass says, Lord, Enlarge our territory. Enlarge my territory. When we got married, we uh, I always wanted to do foreign missions, and and uh, believe it or not, I used to watch uh, the guy from Louisiana as he was preaching, uh, Jimmy Swagger. I would watch him late at night, and as I was preaching, shame on you, as he was preaching, as he was preaching. He was overseas and he was preaching by way of interpreter. And I said to the Lord, Lord, I want to do that one day. Lord, I want to be able to preach through an interpreter. I want to reach people for you. I want to tell people about who you are, what you do. So right after we got married, we took this passage, j -Bad's prayer, and put it in every version we could think of. Version mean New King James, King James, NIV, every version that we could think of, we printed it out 
and framed it. And put a frame in every room with this prayer. Mm -hmm. Lord, bless us in thee. Mm -hmm. Lord, enlarge our territory. Lord, make our ministry global. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, the next year, mm -hmm. we were in Brazil. And everybody had their interpreter come in. But they flew a guy in to interpret just for me. Mm. Because, you know, I was young and I could do some, I did some different kamikaze stuff when I preached. Mm -hmm. So they knew that the lady that was interpreting for everybody else and the guy that was interpreting for somebody else, even the guy who sponsored the trip, they knew they needed a hot, fiery guy to interpret for me. Mm. They brought in Junior. Junior and I was about 10 years apart in age, we were about the same size. We, we both had gases in the back of our head. We both were, were losing our hair. He was a little lighter than I was. He was Brazilian, I was American. But he spoke real good, proper English. And we would get together before it's time for me to preach. And I would give him my few points and we would read the scripture together in English and then he would read it to me in Portuguese and then for four days in a row, Junior and I would preach in two languages. And one day I showed up after the third day, I guess, I guess it was on the third day, I showed up all that week. We had been, been casually dressed, gym shoes and jeans and we were preaching to about 2,500 people. And, and that next day we showed up, I decided I'm going to wear slacks. I'm going to wear dress shoes. I'm going to wear a vest with no coat. I had on a blue vest, blue slacks, black shoes. And when Junior shows up for us to get together in our dialogue, Junior had on black shoes, blue suit with a vest on and no jacket. God had just mended our lives together. So I got up in the pulpit and I started preaching and I ran to the left, Junior ran to the right, and then we met back up at the podium and he never missed a beat. Everything I did, every hand gesture, every stumble at the tongue, everything I did, Junior did. God had enlarged our territory. And every time I got on a flight to go overseas, Sister David says, I'm not going this time. But every time the bird got in the air, guess what, Brother Mark? We were holding hands and the Lord bless this flight. <laughs> God had enlarged our territory. Then it was the second flight and the third flight and the fourth flight and the fifth flight. Then it became Czech Republic. And every time the bird got in the air, we were holding hands, asking the Lord to bless us as he had enlarged our territory. God wanted to enlarge our territory to the point where we have different languages, we have different colors, different races, different creeds. God wants to enlarge our territory to the fact that we can do ministry on a different level than what we've been doing. God wants to enlarge our territory. He wants to make life different from what we know. So Jabez says, enlarge my territory. Become great is what he was saying. The word enlarge means to become great. The word enlarge means to have much increase. The word enlarge means to multiply. And then the word enlarge means to be in great authority. So we pray in this prayer and we say, Lord, enlarge our territory. What we're really saying is make it great. Make our ministry great. Make our ministry with much increase. Multiply our ministry and bless our ministry with authority. j Bass wasn't shy about it. He didn't let his past 
neglect by other people bother him? Jabez prayed this prayer because he wanted God to enlarge his territory. This word territory is, is the same word we get the word coast. Enlarge our coast. Meaning there's no limit, no limits to what God can do. Enlarge our coast, our territory, our region. Enlarge our coast, enlarge our territory, enlarge our region, enlarge our borders. God wants to enlarge our borders. God wants to do some things that we haven't seen before. He wants to enlarge our borders. He wants to enlarge our territory. He wants to take us places that we've never been to. Never even thought about going. When I was in college, the biggest place I thought about going, and Tom Blue and I were the only two African Americans that graduated in the whole electronic department that year, and we had already gotten together. We'd already decided when we graduate and we get our first job, we're going to get our twin Park Avenue vehicle. And our first job was going to be in Atlanta, Georgia. And because at that time, that's where all the technicians were going out in Atlanta, Georgia, and they were making it big. We were going to get our Park Avenue vehicles, and we were going to reside in Atlanta, Georgia. We didn't know that God has a way of enlarging our territories that we didn't even know about. So now he ends up in Dallas and I end up in Houston. It says to us to watch God enlarge your territory more than what you can even imagine or more than what you can dream. The God we serve, he's able to do things that we can't even dream of. We can't even imagine what God can do. j says, enlarge my coast, enlarge my territory. He didn't say, Lord, take me to Missouri City. Lord, take me to Phil Ward. Take me through Bel Air. He said, enlarge it. And he left it to God. He left it up to God to where he would end up. He says, enlarge my territory. And check him out. He doesn't forget that he needs God. Look at what he said. He says that your hand would be with me. You got to come to a conclusion in your life. That whatever I want, I don't want it unless God's hand is with me. I don't want to have it unless God's hand is with me. You know, the senior saints used to say, that's, 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 uh, that's dirty money. The reason why they say it's dirty money is because young men would get in trouble behind that money. But when you do it God's way, and God's hand is with you, it is blessed money. Now let me tell you what I did say. I did say I was going to refuse any money on Sunday and Wednesday. I figured I need to interpret that right there. I did not say I was going to refuse any money. But what I am saying is, whatever you get through God, you'll be able to keep it. He says that your hand would be with me and that you would keep me from evil. He understands that God needs to save him from himself. You ought to pray that prayer sometimes. God, save me, rescue me from me. Hide me behind the Holy Spirit. I told you the story. I was, I was in a church once, one Sunday, and the pastor and I walked, walked in the pastor's study, and the pastor's wife was sitting in his chair. We walked in with him and the pastor's wife sitting in his chair and he asked this question right in front of us and I was like, Lord, that's the wrong question to ask this woman while we're in here. He asked her, what you doing in my chair? So Brian, was that the right question to ask? And he asked her just like that, what are you doing in my chair? She looked at him and she said very clearly, help me, Holy Ghost, help me. She didn't scream. 
She said, help me, Holy Ghost. Help me. What she was saying is, God, keep me from evil. Keep me from putting him in his place in front of his guests. Lord, keep me from evil. When you pray, you got to ask God to keep you from evil. How many of you know you're dangerous to yourself? Anybody? Anybody know that you're dangerous? You did, and you need God to rescue you from you. He says, He says, Lord, that you will keep me from evil. And, the, and Lord, while you're at it, whatever you do, I don't want to continue to, to cause things. And he says, He says, that I may not cause pain. So he's, he's doing this. He's praying. God bless me indeed. God, whatever you do, enlarge my territory. God, whatever you do, keep me from evil. God, whatever you do, I don't want to cause pain, but I know I can't do it on my own. God, I need you to do this. How many of you know that you need God to do it? If it's going to be done right, you know, we can do some things. We have the power, we have the authority, we have the money, we have we are available to do it. We are even healthy enough to do it. But it's better when God does it. Because when God does it, it does not cause pain. How you know that? My yoke is easy, my burden is light. How you know that? God is not the author of confusion. Then I will not cause pain. Let me tell you what I didn't say. I didn't say in this Christian life you won't have pain. Some people are telling people that once you come to Jesus, all your problems will be over. I want to tell you a secret. I got more problems now than I did in 1980. But the fact of the matter is God is with me. God is keeping me in the midst of trouble, in the midst of pain. Finally, he says, so God granted him what he requested. God granted him what he requested. God has a way of blessing us regardless of our background, regardless of the pain that we caused, regardless of the situation we are born, in, born into, regardless of what other folks say about us, God has a way of blessing us regardless. The text declares that God blessed him indeed. God granted him his request. He encouraged him by enlarging his territory. Say to you tonight, if God is going to bless you indeed, you need to know Jesus. You have to know the one who died on Calvary who rose on the third day. And if you've never received Jesus as your personal Savior, this is a good moment to do so. Jesus died, was buried, and rose from the dead just for you. If you've never received Jesus tonight, this is a good moment for you to do so. If you would bow your head with me and invite Jesus into your life. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul. In Jesus' name, my voice. Amen. We believe that if you prayed this prayer, honestly believing that Jesus is the Son of God and that he died for your sins and rose from the dead, we believe that you're born again and you're on your way to heaven. As I said to you tonight, we are, we're in a month of prayer, and we're asking you to pray wherever you are, 
this entire month to call on God. Thank Him for what He has done. Thank Him for what He's doing. And thank Him for what He's going to do. As we spend this last few minutes in prayer, we're going to, we're going to close out our broadcast. And, and then we will continue in prayer. We're asking you to continue in prayer. If you want to give to our ministry, you, you can do so by giving by way of Zelle. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Our Zelle account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Or you can give by mailing in your gift to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. That's P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Thank you for joining us here tonight. Thank you for being a part of our service. Please come on Sunday morning for our Sunday school at 9 a.m. Please join us on Sunday morning at 1030 for our worship service and continue to come and join us our Bible study on Wednesday night at 7 15. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for being a part. Father God, we thank you now. We ask you to bless every listener, bless every person. We ask you to keep us, keep our ministry. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank God.